Hey guys, I wanted to try to get on here and do the um, second part of our adoption story. I couldn't fit it all into one because I talk a whole lot. Um, everybody's sleeping, so I finally got time to hop on here real quick and do it. Um, so, kind of where I left off was talking about, you know, uh, starting in the process, you're working on paperwork to bring home a child, period, point blank. And then once you're matched, you're working on paperwork to... Um, bring home that specific child. So it kind of changes gears and it's a lot of paperwork about them specifically. And so um, we were matched in July. We found out he was our son for sure in July. And then we started paperwork specific for him and um, he came home in January. So it took about six months. Um, so what happened was we found out and we had a baby shower. I'm getting ahead of myself. We had our baby shower in November I believe because we knew we were getting super close and I'm telling you We already had like his crib and stuff like that, but I'm telling you nothing makes it real well in my experience Nothing makes it real like having diapers and wipes in your house like I people had bought me outfits I had we had his room set up. We had toys But nothing made it real to me Until we had the diapers the wipes like it was just so crazy and I remember um I had asked my mom and dad for a um, specific car seat. That's what they were going to buy is the car seat we wanted. And opening that car seat, it, I don't know. My baby shower just made it all so real to me. And, and we had um, pictures of Connor set up at the shower. So a lot of people, it was the first time they were getting to see him. and Because and, Hong Kong, you're not allowed to show him um, on social media or anything like that. So we had to keep him pretty private. I mean, we would show people and like, message them or text them you know but we couldn't like have him out in the open and show him off um and you can't do that either for the first six months they're home till you finalize the adoption hong kong does not let you finalize for six months so that's something kind of different too but anyway um the shower was, went phenomenal it was great we had um some awesome ladies from our church put that together and it was wonderful and um i just remember it making it so real and um I remember our pastor's wife, Christy, she's the one that helped put it together. Um, she prayed before we ate and she prayed for him, over him. And I remember we cried and we cried and we cried and we cried. And, and so that was, that's something I'll always remember. And um, anyway, it just made it real. There's something about them showers, y'all, that when you get the stuff in your house, it's just, this is really happening. And um, throughout the process, we felt like we were dreaming so many times because this is what we'd wanted for so many years. And so, um, I'll never forget my baby shower. That was a really good, good time. Okay, so then um, in December, we knew we were super, super close. And um, his social worker let us know that the adoption work, um, adoption worker, the adoption unit <clears throat> had in Hong Kong had let her know that um, we could possibly travel um, the f January 10th, that week. Um, we could have traveled the week of Christmas, but there were some people on the adoption unit that would have been um, off, you know, celebrating with their family for Christmas, and they wanted um, to be a part of it because they were attached to Connor. They loved Connor. They wanted to meet us. And I think if we would have followed it, they would have let us come at Christmas because I think all our paperwork would have been in. We could have came that last week of December. But how selfish would it have been for us to fight it when these people have took care of our baby for seven years? So we, of course, didn't fight it. Um, and so we spent our last Christmas um, here without him. Um, a lot of our families were sad. A lot of our friends and family were like, maybe he'll come by Christmas. I hope you get him by Christmas. I feel it in my bones by Christmas. And I don't know why, but I had this peace. I, I just knew he wasn't going to be home by Christmas, but I had this peace because I knew it's our last Christmas without him. And we celebrated so big because we were so excited. He got all kinds of gifts. We did not unwrap them. We let him unwrap them when he got home. So it was it was still like a wonderful we were not sad at christmas we were really happy my christmas it was like we just knew it, it's almost time you know but what our families didn't know because we didn't tell was that um we uh, the adoption unit had let his social worker in hong kong know and she had let us know to look at the week of january 10th so we did not tell anyone that um and 
at Christmas, you know, we went to we went to Jeremy's parents, and then we went to my parents, and we handed them this. We let them open the presents. We bought them and everything. We did all the presents, and then we're like, we have one more thing for you. This is from Connor, and we gave it to him, and it was this card, and on the front it said, like, my mom is Lala and my dad is G. So like on theirs on the front it said, Merry Christmas, Lala and G, because that's what he's gonna was gonna call them. And when when they opened it, it said, I can't wait to meet you on January fifteenth. And um, we videoed them, so they um, look on all my videos here on my channel, and it's on there. And my mom's reaction is priceless, and Jeremy's parents' reaction is awesome. And so I'm really glad we we decided to surprise them. It was really hard to keep that secret. We had to tell a lot of lies. <laughs> it was super hard, but um, it was worth it. The reaction and the video, it is awesome it's just awesome i love that i have it i, I literally watch it all the time y'all just to get the feels you know and it's awesome so um we uh we're just waiting on his um passport and stuff and he didn't get that till not long um before and then once we found out that um he got it and it was all good we could book our tickets and we went with adoption airfare they are a um organization that will help you find the they'll like look for you and find the cheapest prices and they do it for families adopting going to get their children or going to meet their children and um they helped us out so much because it was a lot of worry it was a lot of stress it was right there at christmas it was like like we weren't allowed to buy the tickets until we for sure had the confirmation yeah it's a go and so we didn't get that to like it was like a week before I think yeah to go get your tickets you know so and it was super stressful but they took a lot of the stress off us they're awesome look them up for sure and um so I remember um feeling almost sick like we wanted it so bad but we I just felt sick like it was freaking me out and I think it was the travel and that because I've never been out of the country um, neither one of us had ever been to China or Hong Kong and it was just just a lot of nerves and it was a lot of um, fear <clears throat> setting in fear of I don't know how to do this I don't know how to take care of him I don't uh, what are we doing I, oh my gosh and I remember one day um, just crying and crying and it seems so ridiculous now <laughs> that I was really scared and I remember telling Jeremy, what if he don't like us? Like, this isn't a newborn baby they're handing you. This is a child that already has his likes, dislikes. You know, he's three years old. You know, what if he don't like us? And look at, he loves us. So looking back now, I can laugh about it, but it was scary. And um, so we, um, our, our moms took us to the airport that morning and uh, we left and we had three layovers on the way there. The longest one flight we had, one of the three, was 16 hours straight. And that wasn't even all. Like, we ended up traveling, I think it was like 21 hours, 22 hours, something like that. So, it was crazy. And on our 16-hour flight, of course, there was three aisles. And the middle aisle was like four seats. And me and Jeremy were in the middle of two other people. And you know, it's just cramped. They're telling you, make sure you get up and walk. You know, you have to get up and walk, but yet you're crawling over people to get up and walk. It was just crazy. And um, I remember when we got to Hong Kong, um, being so scared. Um, we arrived, Jeremy went to, and all I wanted, I remember this vividly, all I wanted was to go to our hotel room throw down these carry-ons we'd been lugging around all day, put on my pajamas, and brush my teeth. Like, I was dying to do those three things. That's all I wanted. And, um, you had to, of course, change your money over because our money's not like our money. And when Jeremy went to the booth to do that in the airport, most of them knew English, but the lady knew English, but she, we're so, our accents are so country. She could not understand Jeremy, and he could not understand her. So, like, I, and I remember um, she couldn't understand what he was saying. We had no idea how much money to get because we didn't want to change over all our money. And, then, you know, and it was crazy. And 
Um, normal. We arrived on a Saturday, I believe it was there. Yeah, and so like we were pretty much on our own like I think sometimes if you get there during the week maybe they'll meet you at the airport I'm not really sure I could be wrong on that but anyway no one met us at the airport we were on our own and it was okay we figured it out God was with us but I do remember sitting on our luggage in the middle of this airport bawling just crying and Jeremy's over trying to switch out the money he's getting frustrated with me because he's like can you come over here and help me and I'm like mm. you know I can't because I'm crying it was crazy but anyway we made it we get out to get on a taxi. There's two different um, lines. We had no idea which line to get in. People are passing us up left and right, and we're just kind of standing there like, what do we do? I don't know what to do. And finally, a guy came over, and Jeremy just turned around our where we had printed it off, where we had our t hotel confirmation. He just kind of turned it around to him, and the guy was like, get in this line, get in this line. So, okay, so we're in the taxi, and we are nervous wreck, scared to death, like, what is going on, and, um, I remember looking out at all these tall buildings and all these stuff whizzing by, because the taxi drove fast, fast, and I remember thinking, what are we doing, like, we've lost our minds, I don't, why are we here, like, this is crazy, we cannot do this, we don't even know how to take care of a child, like, what are we doing, and, I remember being so afraid, and I was afraid too because I'm like, he's Down Syndrome, what are we doing? We don't know what to do. We are we are crazy. We are absolutely crazy. I can't do this. Like, I, seriously, the can'ts, the what am I doing, all of it, it consumed me. And I just remember looking out the window of the taxi at all the scenery, and I kept looking up at the stars, and I just kept thinking, do not cry. Because I knew if you start crying, 21 months of tears and sweat and paperwork and red tape and if you start crying you're not going to quit crying like do not cry I was like begging myself not to cry I did that most of the trip but anyway um and I just kept thinking oh my goodness lord just please give me peace I know you have not brought us through all of this to leave us now I know this is your plan or it wouldn't have come to pass I know that you know and I was just crying out to God and and I looked up to the front of the taxi and I feel like God sent me a sign and peace I'm telling you I've never had peace like that and on the front of the taxi the taxi drivers had their name it was just their last name on a piece of paper so you knew who was driving you or whatever and um, it was the same last name as Connor like his birth name um, and before anybody says anything no it was not his dad it was not I don't think it was anyone kin to him it just happened to be that same last name but it gave me so much peace because I was sitting there saying Lord what are we doing why are we here are we crazy what what have we done um, I need a sign Lord I don't I don't know what we're doing I think we've lost our minds why are we here what are we doing why I just kept saying over and over in my mind why are we here and when I saw that last name that is why you're here this baby is why you're here because he's yours He's your baby. And so seeing that last name, it was just, I have chill bumps just talking about it. It was just an awesome experience. So um, we got to our hotel room and I got in my PJs and I brushed my teeth. <laughs> and um, it was like daytime at home the next day. And anyway, it was crazy because it's a 12 hour time difference. So um, I remember the next day going out and exploring. The next day there was Sunday and we weren't going to meet Connor until Monday. So we went out exploring, done some things, but just knowing that we are we were like five minutes away from him at our hotel just knowing that was so awesome it was just an incredible feeling you just wanted to run straight to the orphanage like a crazy person but we did not because <laughs> you know we wanted to bring him home we didn't want to look crazy but you wanted we wanted to so bad so um we met him on monday um incredible I could do a whole blog on meeting him. I think I really could. But our social worker came and picked us up. Um, or it's his social worker. His social worker in Hong Kong came and picked us up. She told us she'd meet us in the hotel lobby. She was almost an hour late. We were getting scared. We didn't have a number to call her. Um, Jeremy ended up finding her number on an old email we had um, and asking the people in the hotel lobby if we could use the phone and calling her 
and she didn't answer and we were afraid maybe we were supposed to go to the orphanage like I hope she's not waiting on us somewhere did we get confused did we tell her the right hotel anyway finally she came and she apologized I'm I'm not sure what had happened but she apologized and so we rode in the taxi over there and it was just the weirdest feeling riding in the taxi over there knowing I'm about to meet my baby like I cannot even tell you the emotions I can't even explain it to you so anyway I'm trying really hard not to cry because I know if I start crying it's gonna be bad so anyway um we walked in we got there and we started to walk in the door and his um, key caregiver, which is the one that was assigned to him, they all took care of the kids, but you had one assigned to you that, you know. And so the one assigned to him, she'd been with him the whole time he'd been there. He was three years old. Um, she, we started to go in the door and she said, no, no, I'm not ready. Go back out, go back out. And she was gonna video for us. So she videoed for us and we were really glad that she did that because we would have liked to have a video, but we knew we wanted to be in the moment. We did not, I did not want Jeremy videoing. I knew I couldn't video. We wanted to um, just be in the moment and be surreal. And if we didn't have video and we didn't have photos, that was the thing, that was a choice we decided to make because we wanted to be in that moment and we didn't want to miss a second of it fiddling with our phones or anything like that and um they videoed they took pictures the entire time we were there i will share some of them on here i need to make like a slide or something but anyway um so she's like okay now i'm ready so what they had done was um one day a week they did an outing with all the kids and this day happened to be outing day so they just left connor there with his worker and the rest of them went out that way we had time alone connor was extremely shy and they knew that so they did his a little bit different than they normally do the other kids so um and i'm going to talk way more about that because i'm getting long-winded already but i'll talk way more about just how he was his emotions his attachment i'll do all that in a separate video but um so we got there i remember i had told myself the entire time i'm not going to try to pick him up because he's shy he's going to be afraid of us so i'm not going to try to pick him up and i will not cry because i knew if i cried i would not quit crying so because i've waited seven years for this i am not going to cry because it's going to be horrible if i start crying i won't quit he's going to really be scared so we walk in and i remember his key worker saying um connor look it's mom and daddy And I started crying and I ran right in and I picked him up. So everything I said I wasn't gonna do, I did it. <laughs> and honestly, I remember vividly every single second of it, like time stood still. And if you're pregnant or if you have kids, biological, adopted, whatever, you know what I mean, time stands still. So there he stood in front of us. He was beautiful. He was more beautiful than the pictures we had. He was absolutely beautiful. And um, I scooped him up. And I just want to say here too, my husband is phenomenal. He waited just as long as me. He wanted it just as bad as me. He loves him just as much as me. But he was like two or three steps behind me. And I know he wanted to shove me to the side and run ahead of me, but he didn't do that. Um, and I'm very grateful for that. And I actually never noticed that till I went back and watched our video of meeting him. I watched how he stood back and let me go ahead. So, and that is just, that shows his character and that shows how phenomenal he is. And I don't brag on him enough, but I do have to brag on him for that because he was awesome. Anyway. I ran in and picked him up and I got him close to me and then of course he arched his back he didn't want no part of it so I put him immediately put him back down um, but I do remember the whole time thinking Stephanie you have to breathe you need to keep breathing because y'all he took my breath away he was so beautiful he was so perfect and I kid you not he was way more beautiful than the pictures did justice and we'd only saw pictures you know anyway um, we played with him. Jeremy played guitar because um, he loves musical instruments. They had told us that early on. And and we played with him and we um, loved on him. He didn't want real, real close to us, but anytime we could get a touch or a pat on the back or a rub on the hand, or, you know, we threw it in there. And so 
it was awesome and I'm gonna do a separate video completely because I'm already way out of time here but I'm gonna do a separate video completely about um, the orphanage mother's choice orphanage about how amazing they were about how loved he was about how cared for he was but I'm just trying to do this about our adoption so um, we spent a week there with him um, and then we brought him home um, one of the scary things was on the third day we were supposed to take him out was it the third day I think so we were supposed to take him out for the day Connor flipped out he cried for about um, two hours straight kid you not screaming crying for about two hours and they let us go out on the playground with him and they're like just y'all go out there they gave us some of his familiar toys and things he loved nothing worked um, and I'm going to do a separate video on attachment, but I will just throw it in that he wanted nothing to do with me. He, he didn't really want Jeremy either, but he took Jeremy over me. And I'm, like I said, I'll make a whole separate video about that because that is a big God story in its own. And God took very good care of us. But anyway, um, and what I will say, I will throw this in about the orphanage, even though I said I was going to make a separate video. I got to say this. Um, they let us try. They could have ran out and got him to quit crying. He wanted them. He would reach. He was reaching for the orphanage. He wanted took back into them. Um, but I will say, even though he cried for two hours, and some may call that cruel, I think it's amazing that they let us try. We were trying everything, but they let us just sit out there and hold him. And it was part of the grieving process. And I'll talk about that in my attachment video because um, we had 21 months to fall in love with him to get attached to him and he didn't know us he we sent him a video he had a book he had pictures of us but still there was a grieving process that went on and I will talk about that later on but um they didn't run out there I know they wanted to I know they wanted to with everything they had to run out there and pick him up and get him to stop crying but they let us try and we the playground is right there at the orphanage so I know they were looking out the window I know they were checking on him I know it was breaking their hearts that they let us try and I appreciated that so much even though part of me was thinking why don't they come get him like what are we doing we can't do this why don't they come get him but they didn't they let us try and so um, the next day he was gonna be discharged with us and we were very very fearful and I will talk about this more in the attachment um, vlog but um, we were very fearful but God made a way and God took care of us and it was very hard but we made it through um, on the way home we were very nervous about um, traveling with him on an airplane um, we had three flights just like we did on the way there but one of our the longest one was 11 hours um, so it helped that we didn't have a 16 hour one of course 11 hours is pretty bad anyway but it worked out that the 11 hour flight was night time in Hong Kong and he literally slept the whole 11 hour flight and so while he was sleeping we cuddled him we passed him back and forth to each other and we got our cuddles in that way because he wasn't very fond of us just yet and when we got to the airport we had invited our friends and family I had made several posts on Facebook whoever wanted to come could come and we wanted everybody there to greet us and um, when we walked through those airport doors, the cheers, it was just awesome. We had about 50 people come, friends, family, um, church friends, and it was awesome um, to have everybody there who'd walked with us through it, who'd struggled with us through it, who'd watched us hurt, who'd watched us cry, who'd cheered us on, who'd saw us happy, who'd all of it. It was so awesome, and um, we uh, carried him into that airport, and cheers and hollers and it was the best feeling he did not cry um it was amazing it was absolutely amazing we have video we have pictures we have we have um it was just awesome it was completely awesome it was a great moment and um we actually met a couple on the plane coming to, to knoxville and they asked us you know where are you from blah blah and we're like oh we're actually from here we're coming home and they're like oh and i don't remember where they were from but they were super nice and um we said, well, we went and got our baby, and they were like, what? You just got him? Like, they were so intrigued by it, and we're like, yeah, and, and they're like, he's so well-behaved, and we're like, well, we met him four days ago, so we can't take any credit for that, you know? We just lucked up with a good baby, and they were oohing and on over him, and 
actually in our video they walk out in front of us so we have them on video so it was cool that we met them and got to talk to them on the airplane and um, Connor was an angel on the airplane he was so good he played with the little toys I brought and like I said the 11 hour flight he slept and so he was he was such a good kid and he is a good kid but anyway um, so that is um, gonna wrap up our adoption story like I said I'll do a whole separate one on attachment and how that went because it did not go how we expected and um, I will say that you can read the books I had read all the books about attachment I had read that sometimes they'll bond to one parent not the other but you never think it's gonna be you and it was me and so I will definitely do a video about that um, and um, I'm gonna also show you I'm gonna do a video about the orphanage because they are amazing my child was loved every day of his life I do not have to worry about that and I love to help other families too that's children or at Mother's Choice to tell them I know you want them here like there was another we have a secret um, Facebook group of all people adopting from Hong Kong probably not supposed to be telling you that since it's a secret but anyway um, and anybody who asks I love to tell them they're loved I promise you they're loved and one girl um, they were matched with a baby and it was his birthday and she was said I'm just having a really hard time because it's his birthday and I wonder if he's celebrating and I wonder if and I'm like oh you have no idea they celebrate them so big I have um, pictures of even other kids birthdays Connor's in the pictures so they'll give you the pictures and there's big banners with their names there's cake there's party hats they all have on their little party hats and they celebrate and I was like you have nothing to worry about and I had people telling me that when we had um, first got matched with Connor and I was upset and I would worry and I would I would look I can remember so many times praying Lord please don't let him be cold don't let him be hungry and let him know that somebody loves him and he knew that and he and um, other families who traveled before us to get their children they would be like well if you don't mind sharing you know what's his name and when I would tell them they'd say oh he's so sweet he's sitting in my lap or he blah 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 and, and I'm able to do that for other not now because all the kids that were in the orphanage with Connor are at our home they've all went home and so that's super exciting to know I've been praying for those boys I got so attached um, I held so many of them and loved on them and one of them just wrapped around me Connor's last day it's like he knew and um, he's home now and we've talked to him several times um, we're actually trying to schedule a time to FaceTime so they can talk to each other and um, it's just amazing um, and I'll talk more about that in the video about the orphanage but um, I wish he wasn't um, I wish we could have found him sooner I wish he wasn't an orphan for three years um, I wish we had his past but I will say that I know he's okay I know he had a very good life there I know they loved him deeply um, and so it's okay yeah we wish we could have had that but he's the person he is because of all that he's went through and and um, maybe he changed lives there you know just by touching their hearts and and um, we're just everything played out the way it was supposed to and that's hard to say sometimes that's hard to um, wrap your mind around sometimes but we know that God is good and God has a plan and um, nothing is a surprise to him and he could snap his fingers and change it if he wanted to but he doesn't which means it's part of his plan and we have to accept that and we have to come to terms with that and so we are thankful for when he came um, we are thankful for how he came into our life we are thankful for adoption adoption is beautiful it's wonderful we had seen other families do it we had watched it unfold in other families but you cannot truly grasp the beauty of it until you walk into that orphanage and you look face to face at your baby and um, it was an incredible moment it was an incredible journey it was 21 months start to um, meeting him and um, then of course we had to wait six months to um, legally adopt him because that is the rule in Hong Kong and the reason they do that is because so many families change their minds like oh he's got all this medical we didn't realize or he's not attaching to us or he's not you know and I'm not even gonna go into how I feel about that or what I think about all that but that's why they do that and you're not allowed to have them on social media you're not allowed to do anything like that because technically they're just in your custody and um, I'll never forget the day at Hong Kong it was our third day there I believe 
they took us into a separate room and they had a signed paperwork and it was signing him into our custody. And I remember what it felt like to pick up that pen and I have never been more sure in my life than when I signed my name that day. And um, going to court to adopt him was another wonderful day. It was phenomenal. We had our picture made with the judge and I could make a whole, I might have to talk about that later. I could make a whole nother vlog a video about that. And, um, it's just been incredible and God's been really good to us. And if you have any questions about adoption or about our adoption or anything, we are an open book. I love to tell our story. I love to tell about what God did for us. Um, I just want to help other people if I can. And if our journey can help other people, I'm all for sharing. And um, just please don't be afraid to ask or reach out to us. Um, and um, if you feel like God is calling you to adopt, I just, my advice is just to pray, pray, pray. Because he will reveal to you in his time. And he will lead you to your child if it's his will for if it's his will for you to adopt, he will lead you to directly to your baby. That's what he did for us. Um, yeah, there was red tapes. Yeah, there was um, times I thought it wasn't going to happen. There was times I can remember sobbing and crying and telling Jeremy, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to happen. I don't know if they're going to let us have this baby. And, and here he is now. He's been home two and a half years. He's thriving. He's um, incredible. We, I had no idea I could love another human being the way that I love him. Um, he's a perfect fit into our family. It is unreal. Um, I feel like we got him yesterday. I can remember it all just like it was yesterday, but at the same time, I, I cannot remember life without him. Um, I feel like he's been with us forever. He is super attached to us both. He loves our families. He, he is such a joy. He is an incredible human being, and I am so thankful that God allowed me to be his mom. I know that I was always meant to be his mom um, and he is truly my child a lot of people are like oh yeah you adopted him you know nah, nah, nah. but no y'all like God knew before the beginning of time he's seen this baby and he knew and the, and to know that he was born to another mother but yet he calls me mom it is it's it's an incredible feeling because it's such deep loss and hurt for him I, I at times when I sit and think about it, I grieve for him. I really do because he missed out on his birth family. He missed out on having parents that look like him. He missed out on all this. But y'all, he's had love every day of his life and he has not missed out on love. And that's because our God is good and our God has took care of him from the moment he took his first breath. And um, we're so thankful that God never leaves us. God is always with us. He's always looking out for us. He's always taking care of us. And that's what he did on this journey. He took care of Connor. He took care of me and Jeremy. And it might have took us a long time to find each other, but we found each other. And that's what's important. And um, we are just so blessed. And we are such a happy family of three. And we don't know what the future holds. We don't know what happens tomorrow, but we know who holds the future. And we know that he's done so much for our family. And we are, we are just overwhelmed with the blessings he's poured on us. So that is our adoption story. And I will share more about the orphanage and about um, attachment and all that later. Because that's a, I'm getting long-winded. That's a whole other story. But thank you for watching these and like I said if you'd like to reach out to me I'd love to talk to you I'd love to help you any way I can or answer any more questions thanks